we have a special presentation for our Dharma talk today. Um, and then Reverend Kobada, after the presentation, Reverend Kobada will offer uh, a few words. Um, but we, the Girl Scouts, specifically Kelly, Sarah, and Sydney, uh, the B BCSF Girl Scouts, they were created a Silver Project Award. And it was a presentation titled, You Are Not Alone. And it's about teens and depression, and it's just a really wonderful presentation. And we really wanted the Sangha to be able to see it. And so they're going to present that um, for the first part of the Dharma talk. Um, it, what is the age limit? It's like teens, 13. Teens, 13. So um, if you have a younger child, it may not be appropriate for them. If you would like uh, to do a fun craft in the social hall or Dharma school teacher, Susan Sakuma is here to do um, do something fun with them in uh, the social hall. Does anyone would anyone like to, to leave or have their child leave with Susan? Betty, would you like to come? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, do, do they want to go? Susan, huh? get some kids oh. out here. Oh, yeah. Excellent. So. Um, Again, this idea of bodhi, enlightenment, right, to see things as they really are. And so I, I really think that um, this was an appropriate time to offer this presentation because it is about seeing reality for what it is. Not only seeing it for what it is, the good and the challenges and the difficulties, but what can we do about it? So I'm, I'm really excited. I haven't actually heard the whole presentation all the way through. I've just been able to catch pieces and bits of it. So I'm really excited with that. Um, I'd like to bring Kelly, Sarah, and Sydney up forward. Do you want this hooked or do you want it taken off? Are you guys gonna stand in front of that? Yeah. Somebody who was stressed out, maybe a friend. Would anybody like to share with the group? 
You can just say it out loud. I have helped my sister with her homework when she was stressed out. Anyone? Yes. I've listened to people, the, the friends that have shared when they're stressed out. I helped Diane with the Girl Scout Thanksgiving. <laughs> So, we mentioned this word stress a lot so far. How would you define stress? Anyway. So, we're going to do popcorn style, so you can just like shout out one word. Yeah. School. <laughs> Drama. Or something. Just shout out a word that you associate with stress, or the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of stress. Frustration. Yes, <laughs> Miko, we know your sister makes you stress. <laughs> So what is stress? Stress is a response to a situation resulting in physical or mental strain and discomfort. Stress can be caused by many things, such as school, work, teachers, your parents, or even your friends. Some stress is unavoidable and even necessary for you to grow. However, too much stress can lead to serious problems like insomnia, depression, anxiety, eating disorders, substance abuse, cutting, feelings of hopelessness, and sometimes even suicidal thoughts. We conducted an online survey of 138 San Francisco students ages 12 to 15, asking if they felt stressed during the high school application process and their main cause of stress this past year. So as you can see in blue, here, a majority of our peers were stressed about applying to high school. The top four reasons we got for causes of stress were school, financial worries, deciding my future high school, and other, which we think was probably parents. <laughs> So they often isolate themselves from friends or family. The most important thing to remember when feeling this way is that you are not alone. Here are a few examples of some famous people that have opened up about their own struggles with stress. Selena Gomez talked about how stress from family and health problems led to her depression and how seeing a therapist changed her life. Emma Stone found relief from channeling her anxiety into acting, and Justin Bieber opened up about how his insomnia led to Adderall drug abuse, and he's also getting help from a therapist. Even though stress is not an illness you can cure with medication, there are some scientifically proven ways to cope with feeling stress. The number one way to deal with stress is talking about it with someone you trust. Exercise is also scientifically proven to reduce stress as it strengthens neurons in the brain. It's also very important to get plenty of sleep, at least eight hours a day. Be sure to eat three healthy meals a day and not put toxins into your body. Don't do drugs, smoke, vape, drink alcohol, or consume junk food as ways to cope because this will only make things worse. Less screen time can also help relieve you of stress and relax your brain. It's always encouraged to ask for help. Find a trusted adult or friend to talk to such as a teacher, school counselor, classmate, aunt, uncle, or family friend. Make sure if you do consult someone that it's at the right time and you have their full attention. A good time to do this is in the car, where both you and the trusted adult or person will be able to have a serious conversation without distractions. Honesty is key. You may be surprised at how understanding people can be. Can everyone brainstorm someone that they would trust for help? I would trust my sister for help. I would trust my mom's friend, my auntie Kate. I would trust my friends for help. If you feel comfortable, can you please share that person with a neighbor? Okay, would anyone like to share with the group? Person. My friend Sue. Okay. As you know, our troop is affiliated with the Buddhist Church of San Francisco. We'd like to include some ways of how Buddhist teachings tie into all of this. 
having a Buddhist mindset can be really helpful in dealing with stress. Buddhists are optimists and try to see the best in every situation while keeping a calm and compassionate feeling. If you try to think positively, you will become less stressed than if you were to be a pessimist and only see the negative side of things. An example of this would be to incorporate meditation to your daily routine to release stress and cleanse the mind. Seeking guidance from your own faith may also be helpful in relieving stress. So doing this project, we um, did a lot of research and we met many people that kind of helped us with this project. So one of those people was Leo Jostin Sensei, and he's a retired therapist. And he um, taught us a meditation exercise called Four Point Breathing that you can use to calm yourself when you're feeling stressed. So we're going to practice that right now. So we're going to do the Four Point Breathing meditation. So try to clear your mind of everything. Get in a comfortable position, both feet flat on the floor. You may close your eyes or keep them open. Now follow me. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Relax, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, relax, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, relax, two,
Kelly, Sarah, and Sydney. As I mentioned, there's brochures in the back. And if you have a, a, do a son, a child, a grandchild that you think would benefit from this, it's on our YouTube channel. You just log on, go to YouTube, and type in Buddhist Church of San Francisco, and you'll find their, the, the whole presentation there. So I, I invite you to do that. And now I'd like to invite Reverend Kobata to offer a few words. Well, on behalf of all parents, I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't know any better. Because we experience what our parents did to us. And then we pass it on to them. But this is how we become more mindful, aware. And that's what we're trying to do here in the Sangha. Just to become more aware of life. And our own in a Shin perspective, foolishness. We are all fallible, limited, <coughs> confused beings. But we're all trying to, as we follow the teachings of the Buddha, become more aware beings. Not only for our own enjoyment or re relief of our own suffering, but to try to avoid creating suffering for others our kids, our grandparents, our families, our parents, <laughs> on and on. Because we're not alone. Everything's connected. And I was so appreciative of your way of making that connection for us in a very clear, simple way. And uh, just helping us to appreciate this is why we have the song. This is why you come together to encourage each other on this path of awakening. And this is what Siddhartha taught, or realized actually. He didn't make it up. He just realized it 2,600 years ago. And he was so encouraged by this feeling of oneness, connection, that we don't live alone, that he wanted to share it with others. And that's the spiritual legacy that we're all sharing. So hard it is to be born as a human being but even more difficult it is to figure out what our life's about. But now we have that opportunity, and I hope we really take this opportunity, as we would say, in gratitude. Okay, but one final thought, because for those of you who haven't heard, I think it's probably going around, I was not selected as a bishop elect. So we just keep moving along, well, there are certain other technicalities that we may pursue, but anyway, I was trying to encourage that for the future, and that's what I think, you know, the bishop should be thinking of, is looking at the future of our sangha. And rather than bemoaning, you know, our, what I, I would refer to as the sinking ship, the Titanic, let's start building a new ship. And that was my kind of thing, but anyway, the selection committee maybe felt that it was a little too radical or not comfortable for them to support. But anyway, what I tried to do, because I happened to be reading this magazine called Lion Roar, it's the current issue, and the, uh, they invited a group of young people, millennials, to share their thoughts about the future, how they see the future of our Sangha. And I happened to notice and be very inspired by one of the young people was Tara Umemoto, who's an active member at the Berkeley Buddhist Temple. And her thoughts, and they summarized it in this way. When I think about the future of Buddhism, I see inclusivity, change, kindness, community. I see Namor Minamoto. And that was so inspiring for me that this is what I presented to the selection committee. This is what we should be listening to. This is what we should see as our future. We've had, I've had 50 years to try, but now we need to listen to the young people who have gotten it already and to be able to feel confident, grateful, and entrust ourselves in that awareness that energy. 
that they bring to our sangha. Okay? So as much as, yeah, we're elders, we're seniors, and all this and that, and we have certain chronological <laughs> advantages, but also it has certain disadvantages, because some of our thoughts get ingrained to such a point that we can't see things differently. And this is where I was encouraging that committee, whether they selected me or not, to let's listen, let's take this vision and support it and encourage it for the sake of not just the Buddhist churches of America, but the, for the sake of all beings, which is, we are alone. And so for that, thank you again, Kelly, Sydney, Sarah, for this wonderful presentation and the wonderful way that you've been able to assure us that our future is okay. Thank you. And anyone who would like a copy of this, you know, you're welcome to pick it up. It will make copies. It is? Okay, so for those online people, <laughs> You're welcome to take a look at it. Not only hers, but the other young people that were sharing their thoughts, I think, were very wonderful. Okay? It's usually not the kind of things that, frankly, our leadership thinks about. <laughs> but this is where I was so encouraged by it. That despite ourselves, <laughs> our kids are okay. <laughs>